V, I remember you and I first met Jeremy uh, up in Washington State. We uh, had a chance to meet him early on when we were doing some when we first started at Skylum. And uh, oh, yeah, Jeremy, we've also time. crossed paths <laughs> with you at WPPI. I'm hoping you're going to be at the next WPPI because I'll be there too. That's coming up here soon. But you are a, a, a master there. You've won so many awards. You teach. You've got just this great creative approach. And uh, I, I don't want to steal Vanelli's thunder, but here's the thing I love and appreciate about your work. You have the design sense of a graphic designer because you have that background too. And you apply it to photography. So you have... It's like you have like an art director brain and a photographer brain and you put that together. And like when I look at your photos, I'm like, whoa, look at the lines, look at the patterns, look at the colors. Like I could look at your pictures for hours because I just keep seeing all these things. So I don't know if your brain ever turns off, but it's amazing. So it I'm going to let you guys talk and <laughs> Vanelli is going to do this. I do love your work. We're glad to have you here. So let me Thank get out you. of the way and let you and Vanelli talk. But guys, hang in here. Uh, Jeremy's got some great stuff to show. Well, welcome, Jeremy. Jer Jeremy is a wedding and portrait photographer based out of California. And like Rich said, he is, your original background was graphics, right? Yeah. You were doing all these incredible um you were editing so many people's, so many photographers' images, and they were winning awards based on your images. And then finally you said, what the heck? I might as well learn <laughs> photography. Man, you remember the story. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> By the way, long time no see. I'm love to see. Well, even though it's virtually. And, you're, and, you're, and your child is looking beautiful growing up. Thank you. So I told you. I just put it to phenomenal. sleep. So like I had this quiet time that I could do this now. <laughs> Great. So what do you have for us today? So I'm going to talk about um, my type of work and why Luminar AI is really helpful tool for me. So let me see if I can share my screen really quick here. Am I on screen one? Hold on. It's always confused me if you have multiple monitors. Okay. Does that work? Yep. There you go. All right. So um, that's just me there. I don't know. I put that together really short amount of time. So actually, I was listening to um, Michael's um, talk, and it's actually kind of related to what I want to say in the beginning is that uh, for the longest time, I don't know when did that happen, but then I called my people ask, what kind of work do you do? I was like, uh, I do fine, fine art, um, wedding photography. Like, but then people have a lot of questions about fine art. I mean, but Michael actually answered the question, finally something that people buy and hang on the wall. For the wedding world, basically they pay, the commissions pay already, so it's not really fine art. So I kind of changed that to painting style, bridal portraitures, rather than so-called fine art, because it's not the same, I don't think. I'm updating that from now on. <laughs> and then I do a lot of outdoors, and when you do outdoor, you would capture skies. So if this, let's see, if we do this, come on, click. Oh, there you go. So that's me. Um, da, 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 you know, I know I just follow the guideline of the sky. I'm like, well, how it's supposed to present, but then I don't like to talk about myself. So I'm going to skip this page. But if you want to look for me, this is my Instagram and my Facebook page. But the Facebook short page. version, guys, is you're, he's very qualified. So look him up. But I, I love his images and you, you guys are going to really enjoy oh. it. So take a look at his work. Thank you. All right, so like I said, I do a lot of outdoor because uh, before the pandemic, basically, I do travel around because my clients is international. Um, mostly I do something called pre-wedding. It's not wedding day portrait. It's more like they like to take exotic bridal photo before the wedding day. And they wanted to print those pictures up even like for war size during their weddings. So that's what I do most of the time is with pre-wedding. So for that, meaning that I, I don't have a set studio, so I can not control the environment. Especially, I cannot control the weather. If the weather is bad, then the picture might be eh, you know. And the fact about my style is that I like to incorporate environments. So the sky will be captured in a picture regardless. Just like this one here, like you'll see the cloudy sky. Would you think there's cloud there? So something like this, as well as like in Prague, you know, this is actually. Who, who's the guy on the bike? The best man? <laughs> oh, you, this is a good story. Um, normally, you don't want people in your picture, right? So if you ever in Paris, this is actually the, the, that bridge under, which is, you know, that movie Inception? This is exactly that location. 
<laughs> Seriously. And then I saw this biking guy coming all the way from the, because it's a straight road, right? I saw that, hmm, I wonder what happened if I incorporate this bike guy into the picture. It would add more story to it. And then I'm right. <laughs> it does. A lot of people critique me about, why don't you remove that guy? I say, no, I like the guy in there. It just add more interest. You know, you actually yeah. think about what's yeah, what, going on. What I like on about here. it, now, so I'm looking at the couple engagement. I'm looking at him. And all of a sudden, I looked over and said, oh, my God, they're in Paris. Right. You know I mean? that, that's the so, story I'm trying to create. Exactly. So it was distracting enough thinking, oh, wow. So did they, did they propose in Paris? And like you said, it's a story. They did. Um, that's why they photographed there. <laughs> yep, I they thought it was back. great. So that's my type of style is I like to create a story within a photo rather than just capture something beautiful. I, I find it more fun that way. So again, this is another one, which is for that type of sky, you have to like get up like 5 a.m. in the morning and go to the bridge and do this. I don't like this picture at all because it reminds me how early I had to wake up. <laughs> but it's beautiful though, right? I mean, so when you incorporate that, it's the scenery. Um, in the early stage of my work is I like to incorporate sceneries and the portraiture together to match. So that way, people can see more in a photo than just the brides and groom. Because if you have a brides and groom just fulfilling the whole frame and only the brides and groom will actually enjoy the picture because of their face. But when a lot of people look at it, they look at it, oh, it's beautiful. But the second time they get, uh, the third time, the fourth time, fifth time, they like kind of lost interest. But if you incorporate more of the environment and also the storytelling factors into the photo, this picture will be much, much long lasting, not just for the couple that pay for it, but anyone else who look at the photos. And that's my approach with all my styles. And this is another one. I mean, architecture is also another cool one too. This is a um, hotel in Venice. Uh, you can't really photograph in there unless you stayed in there. So the, it's a very expensive hotel. The couple actually just pay for one night staying there and just to photograph in there. And then the other night they just stay in the Airbnb. <laughs> now, now the, lighting, the lighting you chose for this, um, is that the light? Are you using any other light other than the yeah, light there? Yeah, so let's see if I, can you see my mouse, Professor? Yep, yes. Okay, so right here and right here, I have one light stand, has LED panels here, and then I have another one over here. So you see that's where light comes in. Because otherwise there's no light there except for this tiny little manual there. So that's kind of highlighting them in there. Beautiful. But of course, in pose, I kind of enhance the lighting a little bit more just to you know make them pop. But the whole architect, the lines, it works really well in this scenery. So, and then here's another one with the same couple. <laughs> um, yeah, this is like a random one, like, oh, like, hey, this is a great wing. Why don't you just cross the road and see what happened? And I don't know, if you tell someone that, oh, cross the, cross the road and let me take a picture, they, they kind of act weirdly for some reason. It take a, you, you think this is like really candid? It's not. <laughs> it requires five try to actually get something that looks natural. They want to. They keep looking at the camera. Like, Don't look at me. Just no, act like you're walking. Do not even look at me. Why are you looking at me? The girls are tricking their head, walking. It's like no, no, no. That's not natural. I don't want that. So it takes five tries. It's not easy. Okay, and then then no one in Brock. Um, again, try to because they pay so much going to a location, right? And the landmark there needs to be captured when we photo. Otherwise, why else you travel this far and this expensive go to a location and take photo and when you everything is buried in the ground and you can't even tell where you're at. And that's the whole point about pre -wed exotic pre-wedding is that you need to showcase the location and then using the location to tell the stories. Oh, this one's this is this Ooh. is the last picture of it, but then um, this is pre-luminar. Okay, so all this, the basically the sky back is, I can't find a raw file anywhere. It should be there somewhere, but it's all a gray sky. There's nothing, there's no sun, there's a gray. All this was hand painted in to printing its crowd <laughs> and add the textures wow. in Photoshop. And that takes a lot of time, but I, I'll show you something. Uh, what happened is post luminar, okay? So the problem I can encounter right now for my type of work is, if the facility is closed, let's say if I go to certain places closed, I can't do anything. And also human planning air, you know, it's my fault or the client's fault that want to do something different. Mainly those, those two, you can't fix. This is just human errors or, you know, 
misinformation. But bad weather is something is nature. There's no way we can fix. Even the weather report tell you tomorrow is going to be sunny, and then it could be not. So there's nothing you can fix. And which is why when I got introduced to Numenor, I was like, hold on, hold on. Okay, this is what happened in that. That's the same oh, yeah. sky in the Vietnam um, trip. That's, I was like so upset because when I search on Google, it's supposed to be blue sky, white cloud and all that. It's amazing landscape. But when I was there, it's like, it's all gloomy sky. I said, oh my gosh, what I'm gonna do? And then boom, that's all luminous sky replacement. I mean, Beautiful. just one click easy, seriously. And the fact is that not that I couldn't do in Photoshop, I could, but it's quite a lot of work because I have to um, fine tune the fun ground and make sure the color matches with the sky. But in Numenor, basically it's just one click and a little slider here and there, and then it just relight the foreground for me. It saved me a lot of time, like extremely a lot of time. So but by the way, Jeremy, yeah. De Debbie in the chat says, she wants to get married again to a rich guy just so she could hire you to take the photos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> okay. So beautiful. Turn. So this is wait, did I miss one? Hold on. Something's wrong here. Oh yeah, this is it. This is also pre-Lumina. The sky it just basically it's in Macau and it's a sunny day. In Asia, if it's sunny, there's no cloud. Basically, Macau is next to the ocean. So when it wind blow, basically just psh, nothing. It's boring. I mean, I have a big pebble of sky, just blue, and to me, it, that's called boring. So, and also, because I have to make sure that it looks nice, I have to tune down the contrast and all that, and applying texture. So it's kind of limited my creativity. Also, if I want to have a bright, sunny sky, it's kind of hard to do that. But with Numinous AI helping, I actually replay the sky. And then it also will light the skin in a way. So it's more, you can see the whole, vibe of the pages just changes. It's brighter, it's happier. It's blue, it's more colorful. Wow. That's saving now, a lot asking, of... Where were you when you took the photo? I, I'm um, assuming it was the last shot where, where you're... So when the person was on the boat, the first correct one on the if boat. I'm wrong, Dale, I think that's what Dale this was one? asking. Yeah, this is kind of a lot of days. It's, I'm actually on yeah, a big boat. You? You, see, you see this boat here? Yes. So the client actually went to this boat with four oh, wow. of us. I have an assistant and then also, oh wait, oh no, they got friends. So five of us and the boat, boat crew there in this boat. And then we also went at this little boat because we had the vision of how they be in the middle of the ocean with just them with the little boat. But I forgot that they cannot row the old boat. So we had to, you know, have <laughs> the lady <laughs> row the boat there too. Because you can't have, ask the groom to wear a tuxedo and row a boat. <laughs> so, um, that it's had to happen. I thought if that oh, lady's not great. there, it would be well, perfect. Well, where were but, you when you when you photographed this? Where were you? I'm all, actually on the big boat on the other side, on, on this boat. Not this boat, but I have the same boat on the other side. We're on the big boat. Gotcha. But, because it's ocean. We're not going to ride all that. <laughs> the whole ocean with yeah, no. that little tiny <laughs> boat. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> so I, I hope that answers your question. So, some thought it may have been a drone. Yeah, drone so number three. That's right, Joe. Three. Beautiful, Jeremy. All right. Okay, again, this is one of oh. the pictures in, in Tuscany. Um, I first I like it because there's a big patch of grouse up there. It's a sunset, but then it doesn't have a sunset vibe. So what Lumen allowed me to do is basically allow me to create my visions onto the photo rather than capture it. I'm all about that. I, I like vision more than wheel. I don't care about how it looks in in the real world. But my vision is basically trump that. <laughs> if I want it this way, and I know in digitally I can make it that way, I'll do it. Because um, I find that one really interesting, really, really interesting, um, is that if you're able to provide something to the client, I mean, to be honest, especially now today, right? Who doesn't own a digital camera? Even the iPhone has that, right? So if you take a picture and which also the iPhone can able to produce almost similar quality or outcome, they will find that mm, this guy's not that good, you know, or they feel like, ah, oh, did I overpay, you know? But if you're able to provide something, even though you capture in the camera, it looks like that. But when you do the final delivery, the picture, they're like, wait, hold on. It doesn't look like that. Wow, why does it look so amazing? It looks so different. 
that is the wow factor that you give it to the clients, then you know that's always a good thing. And that's why they hired you. I'm sorry. And that's why they hired you. Oh yeah. So I did that. Well, it's kind of in the picture. I oh. kind of mix it. So we play with the sunset. I actually use the sun ray function on this to, to increase um, the sun ray of the sunset, which is wow, much, much better. And the, we light scenes on that. It's super helpful. You see how the warmness on the dress as well on the face. Because if you see the previous one, it looks like that. That's how the, that natural light looks like. But that really apply and it makes a whole scene. If I don't tell you, I don't show you the before and after, you wouldn't know that was doctored, right? So it's just how real that looks. Exactly. All right, I think that's the end of it. Um, I think I have something here that I should show you, like how my process, how I do that on Luminar. I'm not too sure with this one. So for Luminar AI, one of the new features, which I absolutely love, is a template. Um, just to be honest, I'm actually in between on a stage right here, I try to reinvent myself. When you, in, the reason why I do that is I got bored of what I do before and I wanna try something new. And when you doing that stage and process, you sometimes need to research and you do a lot of mistake and all that. And this template allow me just, because I could go to Lightroom and face, I'm mean, sorry, in Photoshop and do that. But for those two tools, you need to exactly know what you want in order for you to execute it, right? There is no preview or nothing. You, you actually have no exactly what you want to apply certain tools to make that look, right? But for Lumina, what it gave me is that, let's say if I go to scenery, right? They give me preview on what of the possibility you can do to the photo. It's, I don't know how people use it for like, you know, uh, template, like a preset. But to me, I use it like inspiration. Exactly. What else can I do to the photo? You know, what, what, what are people do to it? It really inspired me to say, oh, I could do that too. Oh, wow, okay, warmer color, you know, purple, that works, you know. I, I play around with this a lot. So to see how much I could push the photo into something different. Well, yeah, since, since a lot of these templates were created by, you know, st staff members and mm -hmm. other professional photographers, it's as if you're collaborating with somebody on the side right next to you, you know, and, and you're looking at what would you do with this image? And you click through those templates, it gives you a suggestion. And then you may see something oh, like this, you may see right. this and then take it to a totally different direction. You know, yeah. so there was the base and moved on. And I like the fact that once you find something that you got to have an open mind, like this may not be the perfect vision I have, but it's close enough that I can always go to edit, right? And it actually basically had the little point that showed me that, oh, so for this template, they did something in that panels. So I could go in and adjust the way I wanted it, right? So I could basically open up more if I wanted to, or, you know, just playing around. Of course, this is an example, obviously. So I'm gonna go, oops, what did I do here? Oops, what did I do here? Oh, edit, my bad. Let me go ahead and reset this just case all right so uh blah, blah, blah. but just in case sometimes if i like for example if i know what i want to point right out the first thing i do i want to see the sky so i go to my sky ai and you can tell that there's actually a warm light on the left side so it's pretend it's you know sunset hours but there's no sunset in the back <laughs> so this is what i'm going to do uh i think i have sunset right here i think this is good Damn, there you go, see? <laughs> the cool thing about the Sky AI is that it works. It, I mean, it just works. I don't have to do anything. Like if I go 100%, like there's nothing niche in that, it just works. It's seamless. <laughs> I don't have to do anything. Like you can stop there if you want. It's just already the good pictures, right? But office, we could do more. For example, um, Let's see if what if as an AI do, right? Oh, okay. They kind of up paper like that. And also do a little bit of sky. Maybe just a tag here. It's very simple because all these terms here that Numa AI do is basically photography terms. If you are into certain year of photography, you already know about all these terms and you don't have to think about it. like in Photoshop, you got level, curve, and those are not really photography terms. So you have to 
understand what those are. But here, it's basically very straightforward. It doesn't allow me to think technically, but it allows me to think creatively. What I need, what's next? And I just go for those. Like if I want skins, I could just go in skin, you know, with a little amount here and there and just smooth it out. Or in this case, I actually like the move, which is the same thing as Lux. And what I love about this is actually allow me to do instant preview. Oh, so I can nice. go for a little by little and see, find the one I like. It's from one of the very good tools I always use. And you're and definitely a very visual person. I am. Yep. <laughs> Even if you're you, you should be, it. right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, this whole point about that is it's not about cal. There's some people that calculate numbers. Um, I actually have a business partner who is and was a engineer. He always did pick me. Actually, I like I like what Michael said earlier about I am also a sloppy photographer. I don't do technical. I mean, I know the technical, but I don't apply onto it because I found that that's boring. And also it tracked me into doing the same thing over and over and over. And that is not artistic and creative at all. So I try to, even though I know, I try to avoid that. And this is what exactly a Lumina AI helped me out because I can't just not think about technical because if I have to go into Photoshop and do, um, I mean, you could go with technical here too, but it has a tool for you to be go visually, just look at the pictures play around with it and play around the sliders and get the field, get the mood. And that's exactly how I want to play with my photos. They use the word play. Is that legit? Yeah. Well, it's funny because <laughs> Kent just noticed, Kent just noticed the shadows in the sky. No, that, that again, we're doing something live. If you were sitting there by yourself, oh yeah, there's a shadow to the, the bride's left, but the light's coming in the opposite direction. Of course, you can flip the sky. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. That's easily done. Right here. You know, the engineers yeah. thought of almost everything about this, right? right. I mean, th that, that's what I think is so funny. Is, yeah, you know, I correct you on one thing there. The engineers are brilliant, but they're brilliant because they also work with the artists. So the artists think of these things, but that the two of them working together is the perfect combination oh, yeah. of science and art because, and Jeremy, you've participated in this process. You've met some of our engineering mm -hmm. teams. You know, know you describe these things that you wish were easier to do or these crazy ideas you have in your head. And then all of a sudden you see the gears turning in their head and you're like, wait, you're actually trying to figure out how to make that happen? I like, I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> I know that was amazing. That was an amazing journey. It was fun working with you guys. So, um, you know, so as long as they keep writing, they're happy. They're going to keep writing notes when you're talking. So... And then throughout from the beginning to now, I mean, I can see there's major, almost like every single update is a major update. It's just getting the software better and better and more user-friendly. It's just tailored to people's use rather than technical need. And I really love how that journey going through with Lumina. So one thing I thought that, uh, actually before I learned this, I thought, oh, that's it. But if, what I want to do more, right? So. I realized that I could actually go to horizontal here and do a little change, see how the sky can change. Because for this photo, the sun is actually in there somewhere. Hold on. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's the sun right there. That's what I'm looking for. So I want to get a sun out. Come on, come on out. Don't be shy. Right there. And get it down here. Oh, that's too much. Vertical position that I was talking about. Uh, okay, blending, 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 blending. So I got a little sun there and could pretend because I want that patch of light, right? So I could go in and go to where's my number one fun tools. Where are you at? Come on out. I know you're here somewhere. I have bad memories right now. Sometimes I don't know where things are. <laughs> Getting old. Oh, there you go, Sunway. So I let the pace my sun down right here. I really love this tool. I don't know why. I just do. <laughs> if I have a, if I could apply this to every photo, I would. <laughs> That's it's just fun. We we have about four minutes. Okay, you see how that changes the whole. If I go, okay, I think that should do it. Okay, that changed the whole mood. I have I love how Lumina could just easily help me change the whole mood of the photo, like literally. 
Okay. Um, I'm pretty much done here with this, I think. I mean, as you can see, it's how simple it is. I don't have to learn much. Basically, just go in and try things. And now the day is 2021. People just don't sit down and learn. They just want to do. And this tool uh, definitely provide that option. Okay. That's awesome. And I, I feel like I'm, oh wait, yeah. Normally I opened it in um, Photoshop as a plugin to do more. But um, I found that sometime, I don't know, any has this problem is that after I updated like my Photoshop, it got slower. If I do apply a lot of layers and filters, and sometimes I just do it. If I know exactly what I need, I just go into Luminar AI and use the categories and I mean, cal the organizing skill here, and just find my folders and plug in everything. It's much faster. Like I mean, it's open instantly almost. Ooh. So I do that all the time now. Yeah, again, so I, I, I love that you're plugin. using the environment around you to, you know, to capture these images. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Okay, and let me stop. So, Jeremy, sharing. where can we find out more about you? Um, I'm gonna type it in the chat. You could basically look me up in both, oops, Instagram and Facebook. That's my that's my uh, career at the Jeremy C. I wish I could get at Jeremy, but Jeremy is too much of a common name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, and, and Vanelli isn't. <laughs> No, your name is special, man. <laughs> well, Jeremy, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's always a pleasure having you on. Um, and your photography just keeps getting better and better each time. Thank you. Thank you. So, hey, thank you so much, Jeremy. And we'll talk to you soon. All right. All right.